In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple but quite clever garbage collection card. A few of you have asked about this, so I thought it was time to show how I've done it. First of all, you will need to have sensors for your garbage collection. There's a few ways that you might be able to get it, but it depends where you live. Waste collection schedule from Hacks is a good start. We have four garbage types, and I have a sensor for each one that also has an attribute for days to pick up. So most of this video is going to be about how to create a template sensor that sorts through these four garbage types and displays the one that are being collected next. If you only have one kind of garbage, you can skip ahead to the chapter where I create the dashboard card. As always, if you just want to grab the code, you can find it on the Gumroad link in the description. Okay, so this is my template.yaml file. This is where I create all my template sensors. You can see that I've linked this file from my main configuration.yaml file. I'm going to start creating a new sensor inside my template.yaml file. I will just call it next collection and make sure that I give it a unique ID as well. After that, let's add the state object. Let's start by adding all the sensors into a dictionary called garbage underscore types, where the first value is the sensors and the second value are a human readable name for each garbage type. Next, we will need to create a namespace called pickup underscore days with two values. I set min to 999 and types to be an empty list. We need to use a namespace because we want to use variables that can be modified inside a loop. Then we're going to start looping through the sensors in the garbage types dictionary. We're going to create a variable called days and get the days to pickup attribute from each sensor, then convert them to an integer. Next comes the core logic for tracking the minimum number of days until the next pickup and the related garbage type. This is going to be a bit advanced, I'll try to explain it as good as possible. This first condition checks if the current sensor's days value is less than the current minimum stored in pickup underscore days dot min. If the condition is true, we update pickup underscore days min with the new lower value. Since we found a new lower value, we update the garbage type as well. Remember that this is inside a loop, so it is going through the sensors one by one, updating the variables. Next, we check if the current sensor's days value is equal to the current minimum. If it is, then that means that another garbage type is being picked up on the same day. So we will need to append this current sensor to the existing list of garbage types in pickup underscore days dot types. We can then finally end the if condition and the loop. By the end of the loop, pickup underscore days dot min will contain the number of days until the next pickup, and pickup underscore days dot types will contain a list of all garbage types that will be picked up on that same day. Then the next thing we need to do is put the garbage types into a string. If there is more than one garbage type, we will join them together with and in between, but if there is only one type, we will keep it as is. Finally, we can output the minimum number of days and the garbage type string using a comma symbol as a separator. Okay, finally we can save this file, then head into Developer Tools in Home Assistant and check the YAML configuration. If it's all good, we can do a restart. After the restart, we can search for the sensor name, and it should show up with a number and some text as the state. Finally, we can head into our dashboard and create a new card. Let's create a new custom button card and add our sensor as the entity. I'm gonna hide the icon, but show the label. The name will be the number of days until collection. You can see if we just return the entity state that we get the days and the garbage type. In this case, two, and glass and metals. Since the state is comma separated, we can use a split function. You can see that this effectively removes the comma from the state. If we then add zero inside square brackets at the end, it will only display the value before the comma, i.e. the number of days. I will use the label to display the text that says days until garbage collection. You could make this just a static text element, but it would be nice if it was grammatically correct. For example, use days if it's two or more days until collection, and use day if it's tomorrow. So to do this, we need to set up a if else function First, I will just create a variable that holds the days number. First, I want to check if the days variable is either unknown or not working. If it is, I will just return a generic error message. Else, if the days variable is zero, 
I will return a string saying pickup is today. Then the same, but if the day's variable is one, I will return day until collection. Lastly, we can use else without if for all other variable values. Here I want to return days until collection. I promise we are getting closer to the end. We need one more element before we can start styling the card. And that is the type of garbage that is being collected next. This will be easy, because it is almost identical to the name we did earlier. But we will need to use a custom field for this element. So let's create a custom field, and let's just name it type. All you need to do is copy the code from the name element above, and change the zero into a one. This will grab the string after the comma symbol. And as you can see, we have the three elements that we need. Let's make it look a bit nicer. For this, we need to add CSS for the grid, the card, name, label, and the custom field. I set up a grid with two columns and two rows. The grid areas will be N, L, and N type. This means N, the name, will span two rows in the first column, while the label will be above the type in the second column. You should play around with the column and row sizing, but I've set the first column to be 40% and the first row to be 30%. The card will just have a margin of zero. In my dashboard, I've set the background to none, but in this example, I'll keep the background so it's easier for you to see. The name will have a huge font size. I use 70 pixels and font weight of 500, and I set both justify and align self to center. The name is similar, but with a smaller font size of 22 px. I also set justify self and text align to left. We need both of these. Justify self moves the content to the left inside its grid cell, but the text is still center align against itself. Text align left fixes that. The custom field is similar again, but we don't need the text align. And I use 14 pixels for the font size. I also think it looks nice to give it some padding. And that's it, the garbage collection card is done. I use this on the main page of my mobile dashboard. It's functional and I think it helps to break up the flow of the UI a bit. You could also add a tap action to open a pop-up window where you list all your garbage types and their pickup day. This video was really code heavy. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about Jinja templates or maybe you have a better way of doing the same thing. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.